Recently, someone asked me for advice about how to get better at freehand portraits. This person showed me some of her art. And she's incredibly talented and very advanced in terms of end product detail, but wanted to get away from using grids to determine proportions. This is actually something I've worked on quite a lot over the past year, which I think comes out when you browse through my Instagram page. I realized in chatting with her though that I don't actually have really any materials videos or anything else that details kind of my approach when I'm looking at something like this. So in this video, I'm going to talk about that in more depth. To put the true answer of how to get better at freehand drawing or painting up front, it's practice. But let's talk some more about what that looks like. For a long time with pencil portraits, I used measuring tools to help me along. When I started painting last October, I quickly realized I didn't want to go through all the prep work of using grids, rulers, and proportional dividers. I figured since I was already learning to paint, I might as well also exercise those freehand muscles too. Try to completely associate painting with a simpler and more streamlined process. I watched tons of painting videos by experienced oil painters to get a feel for how most of them approached it. I found there's no one right answer. Some experts rough out a sketch using graphite pencil first, others use an underpainting for their initial structure. There isn't really a right way. It seems exploring different methods to find what works for you is really the best approach. So over the course of 120 paintings or so over the last year, I worked out the beats on what felt right to me. I start these portraits by trying to find a darker color value that matches the portrait, a shade in the skin tone that makes sense to build the outline from. This is tricky to match because you want it to make sense with the other hues you'll be using, but since I don't like spending too much time planning, I tend to just go with my gut instinct and not dwell on it too much. I am not an expert, so my gut instinct is not always right, but that's kind of how I look at it. I mix this starting outline color and then I thin it down quite a bit using linseed oil. You can use other stuff to thin paint, but that's just kind of what I go with. I want a consistency with this outline layer though that is easy to push around the painting surface that's really loose and will blend out of existence if I want it to. I take this thin outline color and start with a head shape. I try to focus more on angles. Sometimes I try to think of everything as short straight lines connecting at angles rather than curves. I'm just roughing the outline out though. The, the details and the precision should come much later with this approach. So next I add a horizontal line where the eyes should be going across, kind of roughly where they should be then a vertical line of symmetry, symmetry to split the eyes, mark the nose, and mark the center of the lips, which should roughly kind of line up where the indentation is in the middle of the top lip, just above that. I bend these lines a bit if needed, if the angle makes sense, the, the lines of symmetry in the face. If you've seen artists use uh, a method referred to as the Loomis method for facial proportions. I think this approach is an extremely simplified and basic version of that to build structure. I also start to rough out the basic shapes of the subject's hair. Now, if this is a figure study, I continue on with kind of a skeleton to build the shape of the body. Uh, a center line down the trunk, down the middle of the body, a horizontal line to path how the shoulders are and kind of the angle of the shoulders. And then I connect lines down for arms, sometimes a horizontal line to, to path the angle of the hips and how the legs are. And I connect these up almost like, as I mentioned, a skeleton, almost like a drawing model in some senses. Um, and I try to judge the length of these skeleton lines and how big they should be in relation to each other, 
which is pretty similar to some of the some of the facial features as well. You're you're kind of looking at things in their relation to other things, and that's kind of a good way to examine your proportions. How long is this line for the arm compared to the chest or the trunk? Are those lengths the same? Are they similar? Are they, um, how does it look on my reference versus what I have here? These are not gonna be completely precise because again, with this approach, you're trying to get used to not measuring anything, not using a ruler, not using grids. So you're roughing it out as best you can. Repetition is going to make this easier over time. So once I have those skeleton lines down, then I start to add bulk. So once I have those skeleton lines down, then I start to add bulk. For my usual head and shoulders portraits, I just try to sketch out the shoulders and the clavicles and major shadowy areas as much as I need. Once the thin paint outline is down, it's time to start blocking in color. What I mean by blocking is that my goal is not to blend paint too much on the painting surface. I want to try to lay down discrete zones or blocks of color. I start with the closest I can get to a middle value and hue. Basically what I mean by that is considering the entire piece What's something that's right in the middle in terms of light versus dark and the color combination? That's where I try to start blocking. And then I can work lighter and darker from that. I use a modified version of what I've seen and heard referred to as a Zorn palette. I think the original Zorn palette is, from what I understand online, is just yellow, red, white, and black. My starting point for building skin tones is actually yellow ochre, cadmium red, titanium white, and then I combine raw umber and ultramarine blue to get my blacks. I say it's modified also though because I like to add a couple of additional colors. I like using burnt sienna and burnt umber, alizarin crimson, and a blush that Gamblin makes that's a pre-mix, I believe, of yellow ochre, cadmium red, and titanium white. Once I'm to this blocking stage after the outline, I try to stop thinking about lines themselves. At this point, I try to approach as much as I can in terms of bulkier shapes. And these shapes are just similar colors that are formed by light and color hue and I try to match them to different color blends. And I have to admit, this is really hard for me. Uh, even 120 something paintings later, it's something that I, I still really need to improve on. I think I'm getting better, but my color matching has a long way to go. Um, so I try to carry this approach of building blocks and shapes of color as far as I can, as far as I can take it. When I look at the painting I finished, I tend to regard it as a success or failure based on how long I was able to keep that process going without reverting back to lines, which is kind of my natural tendency. I think because I drew with pencils for years before trying to paint lines, I'm just used to them. So I tend to revert back to that a lot. Uh, hair, for example, is a point of failure for me on this a lot. Um, I even want to try to block in zones of color for hair, but it's a natural instinct for me to think of hair as thin lines. Another important part of my process has to do with brush size and working from large to small. This is actually something that I've learned from other artists, like experts that I've seen on Instagram and YouTube. So these artists that I admire I've seen them stick to large brushes as long as possible in a piece and work from these really big shapes to smaller and smaller just as a matter of process. And that's something that I've tried really hard to emulate. So some other things for consideration. I mentioned earlier about mixing blacks. 
um, using ultramarine blue and umber. This is some advice that I've also seen online and from my experience, trying to use an actual true black like ivory black, I often turned my paintings into mud. It, it, the black got into other colors too much, I found, and just muddied up the entire painting. I, I, I'm having a lot better luck kind of building the black that I want whether it's a bluer black or, or one that has more umber in it, or even sometimes mixing like a sienna with blue gets you kind of a browner, dark color. I find that that's really useful for skin and for hair. It, it's, it's, I found it to be more effective than true black. So that's just something that I've picked up along the way. Uh, another interesting thing is approaches to backgrounds and paintings. Now, I, I have tried to add backgrounds as much as possible just because it's something I know I need to practice at. Sometimes I think paintings look nice without them, but um, backgrounds, I've seen people take different approaches. Some oil painters apply the background first and then they start blocking in the subject. I have tried that a few times I didn't like it quite as much as adding the background last. Adding the background last seems to take, it, it adds a little special something like a unintentional blending with some of the features, with the hair and some of the, the clothes. It helps them kind of fade into the background a little bit. It adds a really interesting effect to, to the painting. Um, I kind of like it, but I think that that one really just comes down to an artist preference type thing. So that really covers most of my approach. As I sit here about a year into painting, as I mentioned, I've got about 120 paintings down. This process has evolved a ton over that time, and I'm sure that it's going to continue to evolve. So getting back to what I mentioned in the beginning about advice for getting better at this freehand. So I've covered a lot about my approach to how to get the outline and how to look at that and shown examples here in this video. But really the secret is what people usually probably don't want to hear. It's practice. It's repetition. It's, it's just like exercise or working out. You have to work those muscles to get better and stronger and getting improving at freehand, whether it's with pencil or with paint. It's just working that out and just practicing and putting in the time to get there. Um, and if you just go for it, um, there's no time like the present if that's something that you want to work on. And I think this advice is true for really anything related to art or probably life too. Um, freehand, painting or drawing, it helps. If you want to get better at drawing hands, probably practice is what's going to get you there. Just doing it over and over and over again. That's probably something I need to practice. In fact, I know it is something that I need to practice but repetition, that's the key. So I hope that this video was useful to someone out there. Um, if you found it useful or if you have any questions about some of the stuff I talked about, always open to um, answer any questions in the comments. If YouTube isn't your thing in the comments section, feel free to reach out on Instagram. I'm also pretty active over there. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.